On a scale of one to 10, I like to say that partial eclipse might be a three or a four, but seeing a total eclipse on this same scale is a million. And here it comes, there's the diamond ring. And that is the most spectacular sight. <laughs> you haven't seen it, you haven't seen anything. It's pretty dramatic. Uh, a total solar eclipse is a very uh, unique event because the moon, by a strange coincidence, happens to be exactly the same apparent size in our sky as the sun. Have you ever noticed the remarkable coincidence between the apparent sizes of the sun and the moon in our skies? Although the sun has a diameter 400 times larger than that of the moon, they align perfectly. But is this just a coincidence or evidence of a perfect design by our incredible creator? Honestly, it's 2024, and we live in the Internet age, where almost everything is questionable. However, if for some reason you question the power and perfection of God, I'm sorry for your soul, because God is perfection and love without errors or measures. He is everything. Certainly, this is an exciting event for both science enthusiasts and Bible scholars. Prophecy. This type of event is not a sign of the end of the world, but rather the end of an era when the kingdom of God will finally come to this earth and God's will shall be done here, as it is in heaven. The Bible offers you as many signs of the end of the era, and one of them is the darkening of the sun and the moon turning into blood, also known as the blood moon by science. The sun will turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. Another sign of the end of the era is that skeptics, whom the Bible says will follow their own desires, will have a specific philosophy regarding the signs of the times. Mockers will come in the last days, following their own desires and asking where is the promise of his coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. In other words, they will say that these signs have always been present and indeed they are. But Jesus said that we should observe the signs of the times. Many comments on our channel are saying that it's fake, that nothing will happen on the 8th, that it's just a common day, a natural event. After the 9th, they will return to the channel to laugh at those who believed. But before continuing the video, I want to say something to all those who doubt the grace of our Father. Never has an eclipse been so talked about and sought after. This solar eclipse on the 8th is one of the most discussed topics on the Internet. Every day, everything is related to God and prophecy. The Word of God is being studied and proclaimed, so regardless of whether the 8th day is the end or not, the Word of God has been spread, and that alone is wonderful. But in this video, I'll delve deeper into this. Before we continue, make sure you're subscribed, and I advise you to look for the latest videos about the eighth day to binge watch until that day arrives. The Bible predicts that in the last days the sun will be darkened and the moon will take on a blood-red hue, a description reminiscent of the lunar eclipse phenomenon, in which, coincidentally, the moon is perceived to be the same size as the sun, causing solar darkening and the reddish hue of the moon, known as the blood moon by science. There are various indications that the Bible presents about the end of the era, and one of them is the prediction that the sun will be darkened and the moon will acquire a reddish color, a phenomenon known as the blood moon. Before the arrival of the great and feared day of the Lord, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into a blood-red hue. On April 8th, there will be a total solar eclipse in the United States, which will be unique because it will occur in cities with biblical names associated with Bible prophecies. This information has generated concern and fear in many people, including Christians who are already stocking up on food and fuel so as not to leave their homes on that day. In today's video, I will address the origin of this theory and give my opinion based on the Bible aiming to prevent misunderstandings and fears. Starting from April 9th, according to this line of thought, signs may indicate a divine judgment upon the earth, which may manifest in various ways, such as a severe economic collapse, the beginning of a large-scale war, greater than those currently occurring, or even a climatic crisis or natural disaster. 
Regardless of what it may be, these signs suggest that something is about to change and that the world will never be the same again. You may be wondering why people who advocate this theory are so obsessed with the April 8th eclipse passing through cities called Nineveh. The reason is that Nineveh is a historic biblical city from the Old Testament, which symbolizes both forgiveness and divine justice. This city was the stage for significant events that show God's sovereignty. In the Old Testament, we see the prophet Jonah being sent by God to preach repentance to the people of Nineveh. Initially reluctant, Jonah eventually obeyed, and the city sincerely repented of its sins, receiving divine mercy. However, centuries later, wickedness took hold of Nineveh, and God sent the prophet Nahum to prophesy its destruction, which was fulfilled in 612 B.C. Just as Nineveh's divine judgment in the past, there are those who believe that similar events may occur in modern days. Many spiritual leaders are spreading this information, and there are reports of people acting out of fear, stockpiling food and water in preparation for possible disasters. Additionally, some well-known figures suggest that significant events may occur after the April 8th eclipse, aligning with prophetic interpretations about the end times. However, it is important to emphasize that the Bible does not specify astronomical events as direct indicators of the end times. The Bible teaches us that, in the birth pains of the times we are living in now, conflicts between Jews and Muslim extremists are likely to intensify. This is not due to Illuminati predictions in 19th century letters, but rather to the words of Jesus, who warned about wars and rumors of wars in these times preceding the revelation of the Antichrist. About Donald Trump being the Antichrist, I cannot confirm nor deny. The Antichrist will be a man who opposes God, exalting himself above all, receiving power from Satan to deceive the world. He will be charismatic, politically, and religiously influential and will have an ally who will force people to worship him. However, only God knows the exact time and hour of his manifestation. The spirit of the Antichrist is already present on earth, preparing the ground for his appearance. But the Church of Christ should not fear, for their salvation is guaranteed in Christ. When the end times come and the Antichrist reigns for a short period, Jesus will return, defeating evil and establishing his eternal kingdom of peace and joy. The Bible promises us a new heaven and a new earth, where there will be no more pain, sorrow, or death. God will be present among his people, who will live in peace and harmony forever. The final message of the book of Revelation reminds us of the reward that awaits those who remain faithful to Christ. Ultimately, although there are speculations and interpretations about future events in light of Scripture, it is impossible to determine with absolute certainty what the future holds. The Bible teaches us to be vigilant and spiritually prepared for any eventuality, but also to trust in God's sovereignty over all things. Another sign of the end of the era is the presence of skeptics mentioned in the Bible, who will follow their own desires adopting a specific philosophy regarding the signs of the times. Mockers will arise in the last days, acting according to their own desires and questioning where is the promise of His coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. In summary, they will argue that these signs have always been present, which is indeed true. However, Jesus emphasized the importance of observing the signs of the times, including those present in the heavens. Many Bible scholars point to the large number of lunar eclipses in recent years as an indicator of the approaching end of the era. Although there are several signs mentioned in the scriptures, the most prominent event is the foundation of the State of Israel in 1948, the recapture of Jerusalem in 1967, and the return of millions of Jews to the Holy Land. However, there is an undeniable sign Jesus affirmed that the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Stay tuned until the end, as I will share a secular global secret not spoken, as described in the scriptures. Do you plan to observe the eclipse? I would like to. I'm just trying to find some people to accompany me.
Therefore, it is essential to study biblical prophecies, for we are experiencing what the scriptures call the last days. Do you believe I am reporting the truth? It is evident that the author of these words truly believes in this. However, regarding the size of the moon, it is just a matter of perfect alignment, there is nothing more to question. Do you believe in God? No, there is always an explanation for everything. For example, our brains may never fully comprehend. Do you consider your actions bad enough to justify God condemning you to death, or do you consider yourself a good person? Everyone has committed small wrongdoings in their lives, like lying. I have lied before. Have you stolen? Yes, I have. Have you taken the name of God in vain? Probably yes. Would you use your mother's name as a swear word? Of course not, as I respect her. But you don't respect the God who gave you a mother. You have profaned his holy name by using it as an expression of contempt. This is called blasphemy. Daniel, this is very serious. Again, thank you for your honesty. Have you ever looked at a woman with lustful desires? Yes, it's a common thing, Daniel. As a result, you have lied, stolen, blasphemed, committed fornication and adultery in your heart. When confronted with the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, would you be considered innocent or guilty? Guilty, without a doubt. Heaven or hell? Hell, without a doubt. Do you deserve that? This scares me, Emily. I've just met you, but I know you value life and all its preciousness. Have you heard about Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross? Almost everyone has heard, but not everyone understands the significance of it. If you truly understand this, it will change your perspective. The Ten Commandments represent the moral law, which we all have violated. Jesus paid the price for our transgressions, declaring it is finished before dying on the cross. If someone pays your fines, you will be released. Likewise, God can lift your death sentence, for Jesus paid the price, rising three days later. You just need to sincerely repent of your sins and trust in Jesus as your Savior. God has promised to forgive your sins and grant you eternal life, not because you are good, but because He is merciful. Will you reflect on what we discussed today? Yes, I will. You need to repent and trust in Jesus. When will you do that? As soon as possible today. Great. Let me quickly show you how you can be freed from the fear of death and at the same time ensure eternal life, as promised by God. If I were about to jump out of a plane without a parachute, I would be terrified. However, if someone gave me a parachute, my fear would be proportional to my faith in it. Likewise, the Bible compares Jesus to a parachute. Putting on Jesus Christ means trusting in Him. When faced with death, your fear will be proportional to your faith in Jesus as, as your Savior. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Subscribe now to our channel and hit the notification bell to receive all our content firsthand. Also, leave a like if you enjoyed this video and want to help us reach more people with our content. Thank you for the support, and until the next video.